piece. It's super blurry. I can't get my camera um, to do any better. Maybe I, boom, okay. Listen, I needed to take a minute to talk to you specifically because today is July 27th and it is the anniversary of episode one of Fair of the Free Child. I'm traveling. I'm with my sister friend out here in Ashland, Oregon. Um, <laughs> I can't say Ashland without saying a city that has a lot of um, work to do around racial equity. And I'm grateful to be sitting in the space of a white woman who is about that life of doing that work and has a um, a track record of that, who also happens to be my sister friend. Shout out to Hill. Um, I'm here in that space. And every time I'm here, I have to name that about this space, but that's not what we talk about. What we are talking about is the alchemy, the miracle, the magic, the beauty, the life force that has come through the people connected to this podcast. And episode one on July 27th of 2016 was with Tamika Middleton talking about what unschooling is and how that works in her family and, and why it wasn't separate from liberation. And Tamika's interview and my conversations with Tamika even before the podcast, because we had worked on some things together um, and we we're in the same city. Um, her perspectives on unschooling were really, really deeply, deeply um, impactful for Chris and me as we were navigating what it meant to move away from supporters of the system that Marley and Sage were in, which was school, um, over to supporting them. Um, <laughs> so I just wanted to name that and like just thank Tamika in particular for being the very first person um, who we shared voice and space with on Fair of the Free Child and also somebody who I just was able to just like meet up with in the park a few times and be like, okay, yes, yes. And to hear her talk about it as a Black woman, as an organizer, as an activist, like her whole steez is about um, the support of domestic workers, Black folks in general, um, what our liberation looks like, you know, her Gullah Geechee roots and the the amplification of that and, and the embodiment of that in so much of the work that she does is really inspiring and, and really um, allowed me to have a space to, to rest and to push back against the sort of whitewashing of this liberation centric way of living and learning. And so I celebrate with you the very first episode of Fear of the Free Child and celebrate your presence here as a member of our Make It Happen family. Um, if you are not a member of our Make It Happen family and you're watching this and you support the podcast in other ways, thank you. Uh, if you've been rocking with us from the very beginning, we have people who the day I started Patreon or the week I started Patreon, you came through. Thank you so much. I love the way that we can move from common interests to a collective to pockets of community like real community not just people being together but sharing our lives together in certain ways being able to reach out to each other to ask a question in a time where the question or the the whatever the struggle is is causing us our sleep is causing us aspects of our relationships with people we care about to be able to reach out to somebody because you heard of them through the podcast and y'all connected um these are the stories that I know people experience. And so this wasn't, this thing was me sharing the frustration, the anger, the, the passion, the pain that I had around Black liberation across generations, starting with our approach to education and learning. And then it moved into so much more in so many ways. And so right now, as we are in the final season in 2023, I meet July 27th with so much gratitude, 
so much of an experience of mercy. I feel like some of the conversations we had offered mercy and grace and a place to feel seen and heard. This is the language you've given me as people who've told me what the podcast has meant to you. And it has also meant that to me. Um, acts of courage, acts of vulnerability, acts of love, acts of communal care, um, beautiful acts of choosing ourselves over what we've been told we're supposed to do. These are some of the conjurings and results of the community, communities, variety of communities that have formed through the storytelling that happens on Fair of the Free Child. And I remain humbled and riled up at the same time by what happens when we are willing to risk expression, when we are willing to show up in our wholeness, not just the best parts, not just the parts that are uh, easy to articulate, but all the other shit that feels more than it has words. I think Fair of the Free Child, I know Fair of the Free Child, I've been told Fair of the Free Child has been a space for us to do that work, the liminal space work, the not direct, not this or that, but all the spaces in between the work of what happens when I don't know, when I'm not sure, um, or when I'm sure that it's going in the direction that isn't serving us, but I don't necessarily have the language and practice to do something different. Where do I go? What are we talking about when we're not talking about a clear cut solution? Um, but we're also not just talking about the problem. We're doing all these other types of work and we got to do that together beginning in July 2016 for many of us on July 27th. So I just wanted to take a few minutes to say, to express my gratitude for the life of this podcast, my celebration of the death of the podcast as we wrap up these last few episodes and close out this particular version of the Raising Free People work um, and move into all the other ways that the work has shaped us and shaped our relationships. So I still need you in our Make It Happen family on patreon.com. I still need you to share episodes of the podcast because it's still going to be fully accessible. People are still on season one. There are people who still haven't heard of the podcast. So as we continue to live out the work that this podcast helped to galvanize and amplify, I thank you. I thank you for being here. Um, I thank myself, all the things that comprise me, all the ancestral energies. I thank all of the things that comprise what you see in front of you for being willing to move through the work, the difficulties, the solo um, journeys, the collaborative ones when we had a whole team of folks rocking with us to make this happen. Juan Perez, who has done our audio for many, many seasons. Naz, Nazneen, who's just been my ride or die so early on. Um, in podcast production and in mother work and in unschooling. Chris Richards, my life partner, who has been helping us with the visuals of this from day one. Um, of course, Danny, Danny Gutierrez Paz, who's been helping with show notes on and off for so long and also helping us translate it to Spanish in many episodes. Um, of course, Vanessa Venuzel, Vanessa Milano for supporting us um, in gathering the pieces when the podcast became this whole other world of things that we needed someone to help bridge the gap. Romaine, Rom Lindo, my dear cousin who has supported us with so many aspects of the marketing and the show notes and the publishing for quite a few seasons. Um, going through my list. Oh my gosh, am I missing anyone who's been rocking with us on the podcast? I think that is our core. That's been the core team. Um, and all of the, and oh my God, Adrian, um, Adrian Anthony, who went through the first hundred episodes and pulled the themes so that we, that's been helping us now in this final season. Um, all of you who have shared the podcast with other people, um, 
people who've been in and out of Patreon. I do that too. I have creators that I can support, not all the time, but when I can, I do. And I got to hop off because there's someone else and I got to figure out my budget. Like, just know <clears throat> that I love and appreciate all of the ways that people have shown up for this podcast that I'm now calling this elder that has been laid to rest or is being laid to rest this season. Thank you so much. Um, if this podcast, I know this podcast inspired other people to launch podcasts. Thank you for doing it. Thank you for not just sitting on the idea and, and saying, well, somebody else already talking about this. No, we need to hear your voice too. That's the last thing that I'll say. Yes. For anyone who is considering a podcast or a YouTube channel or a blog or whatever it is about something that you are noticing and that you're passionate about, do that shit, do it, do it, do it, do it. Don't let the, don't be intimidated by the production aspect of it because it does not have to be perfect in order to have a deep impact. My podcast is proof of that because I just be doing what need to be done <laughs> and it did not stop the level of connection and progress and transformation and connection that has come through these stories. So do your thing. And if you were a part of me doing this thing and growing it into this thing, thank you. Thank you. Happy anniversary fair of the free child community. Love us. <laughs>